be in the magazine. Oh, some baby could be on the magazine or be on the TV or whatever. It, Moses was a good looking baby according to the scriptures. The Bible says that he was not only was he good which signalized that he was not only perfect well formed child but that he was very beautiful. A good looking boy. Good looking child. Pharaoh but Pharaoh made a charge that all the, 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 the young babies are killed. But now, now what I want to do this morning, looking at the subject a mother's love. We're going to look at joker beds. We're going to look at a mother's love. We're going to look at the love that she had for her child. That, and, and, and no matter if, if you're a mother, you, you know, I, sometimes I just don't understand how a, a mother could put their child in the garbage can. I, I just don't understand how a mother can go nine months carrying that child and, and throw that child away. I, I just don't understand that. But this mother, but here, Pharaoh say get rid of them. Put them in the river or get rid of them. But here, a, a mother's love. If we look at this lesson, we're going to break it down in three points that I'm going to have my seat. Uh, in jo a joke of beds, of being a, a good mother, number one, we're going to see in verse number two, she protected her child. And if you're a good mother, you're going to protect your child. And they don't doubt about it. You put your hands on them if you want to. <laughs> hey. A mother will fight like even if she can't fight, she's going to fight that day. So, so Jochebed protected her child. Then number two, we're going to look at her intuition and, and taking action. You know, she starts thinking of ways why she's going to get this done because many times you say, it's out of my hands, you know, out of my control, and I can't do anything else. They begin to think of ways to get this thing done. Oh, a mother's love has an intuition to, to take action. And, and then lastly, and even uh, Hebrews mentioned this about the parents, that she was very courageous. You know, being a, a parent today, being a mother, uh, well, you've got to be very courageous. We're dealing with some crazy things out there. Now they got things on the Internet. And mother, you've got to be very courageous now. But we're going to look at a mother's love, looking at Jochebed. Oh, Jochebed was very, and she was a very courageous woman because guess what? The Pharaoh already said, you better get rid of your baby boy. Now, she trying to, let's go ahead and get into this. Let's get into it. Now, number one, she protected the child. Look at, y'all have your Bibles. In verse number two, the Bible says, And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him, that he was what? A goodly child. He was looking good. He was a beautiful child. She hid him for three months. Now, why three months? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why. Where she hid him, I don't know. You know, it seemed like a baby going to make some noise that it's hard to hide a baby. And I, I don't know what she took. I don't know if she went out of town. Y'all remember when Jesus was born and Bible, uh, God told him to take this baby and go to Egypt. You, you, you got to get out of town because uh, Herod was trying to kill the babies at that time, all the baby boys. But now, and that's why there's a, a lot of comparison with Moses and Jesus. When both of them was born, they were trying to kill the baby boys. But here, uh, I, I don't know where she took him. The Bible says that she hid him. But for three months. But I, I, didn't he cry? <laughs> didn't he make some noise <laughs> that somebody should have heard him? But, but the Bible says she hid him for, for three months. A, a mother's love is going to protect her child. Whatever she needs to do, she, she hid the child for a, a three months. And I, I believe three months is a long time to hide a child. Uh, to me it is, and, uh, and I'm sure he made some noise, but wherever she was, she, she must find a safe place. And, and many times in life, we need to find a safe place for our children. And, and, and let me tell you, parents, uh, if you got a child, a safe place for your child is in Bible study, Bible school. Uh-huh. I said, that's a safe place. A safe place for them is in Bible school. <laughs> so I'm trying to find a good place for my child when you bring them to the Bible school. Uh-uh. <laughs> bring them to church that, that's a safe place and I know we live in a crazy world now people bombing up churches now but still it's a safe place now they were bombing up churches way back in you know, Birmingham when they brought, burnt, uh, blew up that church building when, that was back in the 60s when they were bombing just saying that's a crazy people going to do things anyway but still put them in a safe place wherever she hit them she, she put them in a safe place so, so whatever it takes to keep your child alive to do that if your, your child is sick Take them to the doctor. You say, I ain't got the money. Go to the doctor. They, they, they got they, uh, Obamacare. I mean, they, they're trying to make ways that you can have health insurance. 
And even with children, they got they, they have, if you ain't got no money, you can get them health insurance. <laughs> oh, yeah, yes, you can. So, so take, if the child is sick, uh, go to the doctor, take them to the hospital, you say, I'm tired, but do it anyway. Because you're trying to protect your child. That, that's, that's a mother's love. A, a mother's love would go uh, the extra mile. The hiding of the child is spoken as an act of faith in the book of Hebrews. I told you the book of Hebrews chapter 11 is called the Hall of Faith. And it mentioned that story in verse number 23 that it was done to, in the belief that God would watch over her child. And, and see, our faith can save us. Y'all don't hear me. Sometimes your faith might help somebody else. Y'all remember the story of this Canaanite woman that had a child that was vexed, that was sick, and in and, and, and Matthew chapter 15, round verse 14, round verse number 25. Uh, uh, then in verse number 28, this woman coming to Jesus and trying to get some help for a child, and she was a Canaanite woman, and Jesus told her that I come first for the household of Israel. I, I, don't, I don't go outside Israel right now. But she said, even the dog eat the crumbs. All. This woman wanted some help. And when you want some help, you'll do whatever you need to do to get some help. Then Jesus said unto her, in Matthew 15, 28, he answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, but be it unto thee as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Because of her faith, her child was healed. So mama, even if your child don't have any faith, your faith can help them out or, 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 or allow things to happen in his life or, or get them back on the right track. Oh, your faith, your praying. See, mama prayed for me. That's a song that we sing, oh, my mama prayed for me. Some of our children need some prayer. And mama, you need to be faithful to God. See, uh, a, a, a mother's love, a mother need to be connected with Jesus so that she can pray for her children. And your children will need prayer. Maybe the one told you, your children are going to need some prayer. In the school system that we have today, your children need some prayer. In the community that we live in today, oh, oh your children need some prayer. The jobs they go on, your, your children need some prayer. So mother, you know, your faith can help your child. <laughs> when you have done all you can, you put it in God's hand. You raise that child. I did all I can do. 18 years, I, I gave you my best and I gave you my love, my time, and, and you still won't listen. Put him in the hands of God. <laughs> and when they're in the hands of God, God knows how to do things that we don't know how to do. But a mother's love won't ever stop. She, she, she understands that her protection from, come from God. Y'all remember old David? David said, the Lord is my shepherd. And I shall not want, David knew that his help came from God. David said in Psalm 46, in verse number 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. When you're in trouble, you need to come to God because God is a helper when you get in trouble. And you will have some trouble. Oh, Job said in Job 14, 1, that man that is born of a woman or what? A few days, but you're going to have some trouble. A praying mother, a mother who trying to protect her child the best way she can. Whatever it costs, she's going to go through it. If it's going to cost her, her life, she's still going to try to protect her child. She will go the, 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 the last mile, whatever it needs, even she'll go without to make sure that her child has. She will miss dinner so that the child can eat. She won't buy a new dress or a new outfit so that the child can have some clothes on their back. I'm talking about a mother's love. Uh, she'll make sure that the child has when she does not have. That's a mother's love because you want to protect that child. If you, if you hurt a loving mother's child, you, y'all, y'all better, you better watch out. You know, even if a child lied to you, you and, and they say they treated me wrong, they still better watch out. <laughs> you know, I remember... Uh, you know, as kids, we do some crazy things, don't we? And I was riding my bicycle one day, and I was coming home, and, and I had to use the restroom so bad. I was, I was riding on the bike trying to make it home, and I couldn't make it home. Yes, I, I, I wet myself. The brother got, and I get home, and I told my mama that those people down the road got their sprinklers, and, and they wet me. They wet me up. I said, Mama, I was coming home. 
Mama didn't smell me. She just believed me. And you don't bother me. Even y- y- y'all don't hear me. Mom went there and, and told and found what was going on. And all she had to do was look in the road. There was no water in the road. <laughs> all she had to do. You know, many times in life, you know, we don't know why we do what we do. <laughs> but we did it. But, but a mother's love is going to protect her child. And number two, uh, she's going to have the intuition to take action. And Look at verse number three of our text. In verse number three, the Bible says, And when she could not longer hide him. Now she hid him for three months. But the Bible said she couldn't hide him any longer. So she had to think of ways to get this done. <laughs> she had to think of a way out the box. And say, if they find my child, they're going to kill him. So she had to find a way to say her intuition, you know, mothers are smart people. Y- y'all don't hear me. So women, yeah, they're smart people. At one time, they thought women, women are smart people. Even when, before they got educated, before they can go to school, they was, women are smart people. They know how to do things that we don't know how to do. Y'all know what I'm talking about. We'll get to that in a few minutes. But, but the mothers are talented people. They can make something out of nothing. Y'all remember y'all that have nothing in the refrigerator? <laughs> and mama can make a meal out of nothing. <laughs> they got leftovers. She put it, and she know how to put everything together. And you got some flour, you got some, whatever you got. And she can make a meal out of nothing. So now, joke bed. Time has gone. Three months have gone. And now, she can't hide her son any longer, according to the scripture. You know, the Bible talks about a virtuous woman in, 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 in Proverbs 31. Who can find a virtuous woman? Verse number 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? If you find one, you ought to thank God for her. For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband does safely trust in her so that he shall need no, have no need of sport. He don't have to worry about her. She will do him good and not even in the days of her life. She's seeking the wool and flax and, and working willingly with her hand. She know, you know, some of the best parents, they, she didn't have a job, but she took care of the house. You know, raising, some parents don't raise 11 kids and got all of them to go to college. Well, you did a good job. Because some, some parents now with a, with a, with a, a PhD can't do that. <laughs> so so a, a, a mother loves, has the intuition to, to do things. Maybe she didn't, Go to high, maybe she didn't even finish high school. But guess what? Her kids go to high school and they go to college and graduate and get their masters. In. How do a mother does that? She has the intuition to, 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 to take action. What she decided to do. This mother, she loved, never stops moving or thinking or, or ways of, of getting things done. She knew that she couldn't hide her son anymore. The Bible says she couldn't hide him anymore. So she had to think of a plan. What am I going to do? What am I going to do when I don't know what to do? She thought she was, they know they live by the, the Nile River. And there was a, a plant there, a, a, a bush a, a, a called a reed, and it, it grew up like 16 feet tall. And I don't know what she was thinking. I don't know if she ever built a basket before. I don't know if she ever built a little tiny boat before. I don't know what she has done before. But I knew that day what she did. The Bible says in verse number three that, that this woman. Uh, 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 uh. And when she could not no longer hide him, she took him in the ark of bulrushes and, 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 and she made it together and daubed it with slimes and with, the, with pitch and, and put the child therein. And she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. And this was the woman, you know, she had the intuition to do something because she didn't want her, her child to die. She's still protecting her child. And I don't know if she learn how to build a boat or not, but I remember when God told Noah to build an ark. God had to tell him how to build it. God told him what kind of wood to use. God told him the length to do it. But this woman, I don't know who told her how to do what she's going to do. There's an intuition of a of, of a woman. I'm just saying, I don't know where she got it from. I don't know if she ever done it before, but that day, she built a little boat there. A little tiny boat, and she put those reeds on there for the safety of it. This tiny boat made of bulrushes of papyrus reed was fashioned by a woman who knew what she was doing. I, 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 I think I said something. She knew what she was I don't know what she was doing, but she knew what she was doing because she, she loved her son, and she was going to put her son in. You know, if you're going to send your child away, you want to make sure they're protected. 
If you're gonna send your, so you're gonna drive your car uh, uh, out of state, you're gonna make sure you got an oil change, that you got all this stuff done to the car, you got good tires. That's what a parent would do. So this mother's about to send her child away. She wanna make sure he's safe and getting where he need to get to. Th that's a mother's love. Uh, intuition of a mother, even with the meals that we have left, mother know how to do things that nobody else know how to do. Now the Bible says in First King. There was another woman who came, uh, Elijah came to this woman and said, uh, give me some food, give me something to eat. And this woman in, in 1 Kings chapter 17 to verse 12, and she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake. I don't have much, but a handful of meal. I got a handful of meal and a barrel and a little oil and a, and a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat and die. She said, I don't have enough. I just have a little. But I'm telling you, when you trust in God and, and Elijah told you, take care of me first. And, and then he told you, go get some vessels and have your people to fill up, keep on filling up. See, when we have faith in God, things come our way that we did not expect. This woman had a lot of faith and a lot of trust in God. Her intuition, because she about to do something, that she got to trust in God. Because you want to make a boat. I don't know if she ever made a boat before. You're going to put your son on the, 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 the Nile River where there's crocodiles. Y'all don't hear me. There's crocodiles in the Nile River. There's big fish in the, in the Nile River. You better have some trust in God or some faith in God because you can't do anything for your child now. She said, I don't did all I could do. And now she's going to put him in the hands of God. That's where faith come in at the trust in that, that God will make a way out of no way. And look at, now she want to make sure that he was safe. Now look at verse number four. Now, don't forget Miriam. They don't call her name out right here yet. And his sister, by the name of Miriam, stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. So Miriam, the sister, that they weren't gonna bother. See, the, the, she was safe. <laughs> Y'all don't hear me. The baby boys were not safe, but the the girls were safe. But she was older than the baby. She was older. She was speaking. She could talk. And she was there. I don't know if her mama told her to do this. Y'all remember the day when mama leave home? It was a long time ago. They don't do that anymore. When mom go home, they, she leaves somebody in charge. <laughs> Big sister's in charge. And they take care of business while mom is gone. If they have to spank you, they have to spank you. Yeah, I got a sister. I told her, I said, I'm going to preach on you this morning. You, she used to spank me. She used to beat me. <laughs> Make us clean up. But, and that, but this Miriam, the sister of Moses was there to watch and make sure that he was okay. I don't know if mother told her. I, I'm just saying that's what she did. She did it because the Bible says she stood afar off and went what would be done uh, to him. Talking about Moses. The little boat had to, go, the, 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 had to go in a certain direction so that it would meet up with Pharaoh's daughter. You know, it had to have faith. You know, you know I think about when, when, when Noah built that ark. The ark didn't have a, a motor. <laughs> The ark didn't have, how, how it gonna, where it going to go, left or south or north? God was going to be in charge of it. When God is in charge of your life, wherever it goes, it's going to be all right. I, I remember the words of Paul, and it said in Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. So when we do God's will, wherever you go is the best thing for you. You might not like it right now, but we will understand it better by and by. And many times you say, how did you get here? I thank God I'm here at 11th Street Church of Christ. How did you get I'm just glad I'm here. And I believe God has something to do with it. <laughs> let God control. Let God guide you. And God will take you where you need to go. Now, this, this, I mentioned to you earlier. Now, there, there, there could be some crocodiles. There were crocodiles in the Nile River. Oh, there was a big fish. There was danger out there. But she wasn't worrying about that because she had God on her side. Now, now Pharaoh's daughter. Probably when now they came by, she was coming there to take a bath, take come and wash herself. They, they didn't have running water like we have today, y'all. Oh, they didn't have running water. They you would take a shower at home. They had to go to the river and wash. Then the Bible says she would come to the river to wash. And, and while she was there, now God put people in your life for a reason. Many times you not you might not understand now, but you will understand better by and by. And even today, if you're visiting today, God brought you here for a reason. 
God wants you to serve him. God wants you to become a child of God. It just didn't happen. <laughs> God got some plans. You know, uh, they saw this baby. L look at verse number uh, 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 six. And when she had opened it, they saw this a little boat, this little tiny boat, a little basket. And when she opened it, she saw the child, that child. And behold, the babe wept. What, what are the baby supposed to do? <laughs> The Bible said the baby was crying, and, 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 and now uh, Pharaoh's daughter, in studying this lesson, she didn't have any children. And I don't know if she could have any children or whatever. Maybe she couldn't have any, but she didn't have any at that time. And uh, 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 she, she, the baby was crying, and if you're not used to taking care of a baby, a crying baby will run you crazy. <laughs> I, I, I said if you're not used to it, and uh, you need to be around a crying baby. <laughs> mothers, new mothers, you need to be around a crying baby. Because your baby going to get sick one day, and that baby is going to cry. So you, you, you don't have it like old Pharaoh's daughter. She can call somebody else to take care of you. Everybody don't have that. I'm, I got a nanny. And not too many of us going to have a nanny in our houses. <laughs> and you got to take care of your own child. <laughs> but, but the thing is, uh, 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 Pharaoh's daughter, Pharaoh's daughter uh, 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 saw this child, and the, and the child wept. And she had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Hebrews' children. Now, number one, there was a plea that all the Hebrew boys was what? Killed. Y'all don't hear me. Let me go over this side. That there was a plea that the boys for the die. He was still a child. He was only three months old. He's supposed to die. But the Bible says she had compassion on him. <laughs> You know, when somebody has compassion on you, and she probably said, I can't have my own. <laughs> I got one now. She didn't call DCF. She didn't call HRS. No, she didn't call the police. <laughs> she said, this is my, she's going to take this child for her own. <laughs> See, God is working on things. You know, I don't know, the intuition of the, mo the mother to, 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 to make a move, I don't, it just happens sometimes that, that if you trust in God and pray to God and make the right decision, by the time you get there, God, you say God was in the plan. God is in the plan. We're looking at a mother's love here because she did all that she could do. But she sent the, the daughter, the, the, her, his sister with him to, to make sure everything uh, 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 was okay. Then look at verse number 7. Then, now, 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 the sister was close by because the Bible says, then said his sister, talking about the baby's sister, Moses' sister named Miriam, to Pharaoh's daughter. Shall I go? Now, now, listen what she said. Shall I go and call to be a nurse of the Hebrew women? Now, why you can't call one from the Egyptian women? God is working on this. She said, let me go call an Egyptian woman to nurse the baby. Because the woman, they couldn't have no, now she couldn't have, she, didn't, she couldn't have any children. So it means she couldn't nurse them. Y'all didn't hear me. They didn't have any uh, uh, semi like back then. They didn't have any infamil back then. Y'all don't hear me. <laughs> they didn't have all that stuff you can make that milk. They didn't have it back then. You, you had a nurse and, and, and she couldn't do it. She, and the daughter, the sister says, can I offer you a help to get a nurse for her to take care of her? And God is working on the plan already. God is working on the plan. Uh, uh, the mother in, in tuition and Miriam took the initiative to suggest a nurse. Uh, 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 somehow Miriam is in this lesson as well. And that's why I was saying when we, when we were brought up, your big sister helped raise you. Most of us was raised by your mom and dad had to go to work. <laughs> Sometimes big sister had to be there to tell you what to do, how to clean up. And, and now Miriam, mama could not be there because maybe mama could have, I, I, I don't know what Pharaoh's daughter was looking for. She didn't ask her, do you know this baby? She didn't ask her any question. I mean, she didn't say, do you know who the, who the child belonged to? She didn't ask that question. When the daughter, when the sister says, could I find you a nurse? She didn't have a problem with them. We understand that a mother's love is a protection. She protected her child. She hid him for three months. And then when she could no longer hide him, she took the initiative to take some action. Then thirdly, in my conclusion, the courageousness of this mother. Now, she sent her daughter out there. That's another. She could have lost both of them. She could have lost her son and her daughter and not only that she could have lost her they would have found out she did it 
They could have died as well. If you didn't go through with what Pharaoh told you to do, you could be killed as well. So she was very courageous to go ahead and do what she needed to do. And I'm so glad that whoever wrote the book of Hebrews, although they didn't put her name in there, or they put it in there. Hebrews 11:23 by faith Moses, when he was born, uh, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child. He was a beautiful child. And, and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. Meaning they were not afraid, meaning they were very courageous. Don't you know if you're going to be a child of God today, you got to be very courageous. Oh, there was God told Joshua, when Joshua became the leader of his people, be thou strong and what? Very courageous. You remember when the apostles was preaching the word of God in Acts chapter 5, and they were preaching, and, and the people told them to stop preaching in Jesus' name. But they were very courageous. The Bible says in Acts 5 and 29 that Peter... And the other apostle answered and said that we ought to obey God rather than man. It takes very uh, a courageous person to obey God rather than man. You know, we live in a world today that people want to be on the, do the, do the, take the easy way out. But we must obey God rather than man. Trust in God when nobody else trusts in God. Courageous means doing things that could bring death to you and your family. Let me say it again. Courageous means doing something that could bring death to you and to your family. Oh, that's when you're courageous. When you could lose your life and doing what you're doing. We're looking at a mother's love who could have died, but she was very courageous. Oh, yes, she was. She, she hid a child. She should have died right then. Then she made a basket for her child and, and sent her child away. And, and then she sent her daughter. She could have left off her daughter as well because her daughter was involved in this lesson. Oh, Miriam could have died as well. But she was very courageous. And many times in life when you're courageous, you've you got to take a chance. You've got to take one step and trust in God to take two. Sometimes you've got to do all you can and let God do the rest. Put God Put God, put God to the work. We've got to put God to it and let, and let God do his part. Only thing we could do is our part. Now, in verse number 9, look at verse number 9. We're coming to an end here. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this child away. Oh, that's when she brought the mother. She brought the mother to her. And then, well, I don't like the way she talked to the mother. But I guess when you the Pharaoh's daughter, you can talk the way you want to talk. <laughs> but she says, I'm just saying the way it's written. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me. But so then she said, I will give thee thy wages. Isn't God working? Not only are you taking care of your child, you're getting paid for it. Y'all don't hear me. And parents, let me tell you this here. When you take care of your child when they're young, you're paying yourself. When you raise them up right, you're paying yourself. When you, ra you teach them to go to school, you raise them. Guess what? You're paying yourself because they're going to come all back to you down the road. So parents, you want to be a good parent. If you want to show some mother's love, love your child while they're young and, and teach them the word of God so that when they get older, they won't depart from it. And guess what? You'll get paid for it. <laughs> oh, you're going to get paid for it because you offer her a pay. She says, I'm going to pay you for, for our wages. And, you know, the Bible says in Psalms 110, in verse number one, I, I make thine enemies thy footstool. <laughs> oh, your enemies are going to be your footstool. They're going to they be giving you things that you'll you be wondering, my enemy is taking care of me. This is Pharaoh's daughter. I'm taking care of my own baby, and she's paying me for it. I remember I, I used to write contracts for the state, and this, this uh, lady, she was a blind lady, and she, she applied for a grant. But what, really, she went, that's when... Governor George, Jeb Bush was our governor. And she went on a cruise to meet Jeb Bush. And she said uh, she was trying to get some money to help the blind. And she was blind and, and he gave her the grant money. And I had to write the grant together and, and, and I meet with her. And she said, I'm getting the money together. And she said, y'all going to pay me for this? I said, ma'am, you asked for it, didn't you? <laughs> y'all going to pay me to take care of the blind? <laughs> she said, I would have done it for free. I said, you would do, I ain't tell her this. I said, you were done it for free. Why'd you go on the cruise? That's the, the governor. But the thing is, 
Here goes this woman. Ben said, I'm going to give you some wages for taking care of your own child. I think that's a good deal. Oh, God is working in the plan. <laughs> Moses' mother uh, reunited with her baby. And God used her courageous act to saving uh, the hidden, the, the, the hidden uh, and hiding her baby to begin a plan to rescue his people from Egypt. Oh, God has a plan. See, God already, we don't know what, see, God had a plan a long time ago before the foundation of the world that Jesus was going to be the savior of the world. He had a plan. And now God has a plan that Moses was going to lead his people out of, out of Egypt because they were in captivity and we are in our sins and Jesus came that we might have life and we might have it more abundantly. But look at verse number 10 about clothes. The Bible says, and, and a child grew and she brought him unto Pharaoh. Now, the mother, Jochebed, took care of a child and the child grew. I don't know how old he grew when you stopped nursing. Some people nurse it two, one, two, or three. I don't know. Some did it to five. Some people do it as long as you want to. And you can keep that child, which I don't know. But she, she kept the child until the, until the child grew. <laughs> it didn't say how old he grew, but he grew. <laughs> and she took the child to, part of, to Pharaoh's wife, uh, a daughter. And, became, and, 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 and he became her son. And she called his name Moses. God is working in the plan, y'all. Now, and Moses being the draw, she said, I call him Moses. You know, people was given names because of what happened in their life or whatever. And she said, I'm going to call him Moses because I drew him out of the water. And Moses mean to draw out. <laughs> and now Moses about to carry God's people out of Egypt into the promised land. So, so God has a plan, although it seems like Jochebed. It just seems like. Joker bed should have named her child alone. I, I say it seems like. Because most of the time when our child was born, we give him a name right then. It seems like. And I don't know if she had a name before the Bible didn't mention his name until verse number 10. And Pharaoh's daughter named him that name. But he got the right name. God was in the plan. <laughs> and uh, a mother's love makes sure that God is in your plan. You know, Jochebed protected her child for three months. And the Bible, she would have done it longer. But the Bible says she could no longer hide them. So she had to come up with a plan. It's an initiative to take action. And that's when she built that little, that little boat, the little basket, and, and put it by the flag and hope that. And she ain't hope. You know, when we're children of God, we ain't got to be hoping. We got to be believing. <laughs> we got to be trusting. Amen. We don't be talking, I'm going to get lucky. No, we don't get lucky. We get blessed. Amen. I'm not going to be lucky that somebody good. No, I'm going to be blessed that God going to send the right person there. Amen. We don't be lucky. I don't want to be lucky. We ain't playing no numbers around here. We, we want to be blessed <laughs> that God is going to be in the plan. And then she was very courageous. Jochebed could have lost her life. Not only she could have lost her life, the husband could have lost his life. The other three children. Y'all, we learned a lot of lessons where people did wrong and they, they killed the whole family. They ain't just killed the one that did it. They killed the whole family. So she was very courageous. A mother's love. We, we could have talked about many other mothers, but hopefully this mother fits somewhere in you that you find out if you got children and now you say, my kids are older, but your faith can help them. Don't you know, if you get closer to God, you might help your child say, you say, I went to church this morning, and you can encourage your children to go to church. Y- y'all don't hear me. But if you're not going, it's going to be hard for you to encourage them to go. Y'all don't hear me. So your faith might help your children down the road. <laughs> the mama was faithful to death, and it might help you. It might help you. So do what you can to do this. And, but if you're here this morning, and you're not a child of God, and, and, and especially uh, this for everybody, but especially our young people. If you're not a child of God, guess what? You're trying to find your mother a, a gift. I'm trying to find the best Mother's Day gift you can give to your mother or to your grandmother is to give your your life to Jesus. Amen. Oh, that's the best gift. See, that gift is going to last for. See, some gifts you buy them a rose, they only last for seven days. 
You give them a few dollars, they're going to eat the food. It's gone right then. <laughs> Whatever. You buy them a dress, they're going to last a couple of years. But if you live for Jesus, it'll last forever. And if she make it to heaven together, well, y'all can be in heaven together. You might not know each other, but you'll be there. <laughs> you'll be there. That's the best gift you can give to your mom. You know, how do I come to Jesus? You come to Jesus the same way that it came in the early, early church. We can't tell you anything different than what the Bible says. Jesus says, come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. How do I come to you? You come by hearing him. You got to hear that he is the son of the living God. Hear the good news, the gospel, that he died for you, that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day. Romans 10, 17, so that faith come by what? Hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, you heard some of the word of God. I didn't give you a lot of the gospel, but you hear it now about what Jesus did for you. Make up your mind to believe it. The Bible still says in Hebrews 11 and verse 6, without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that come to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Be willing to repent of your sins, to, to change your life around, to stop doing wrong and start doing right. It doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. Many times people say, I'm going to wait till I get myself right. You'll never get yourself right. If you can get yourself right by yourself, Jesus would not have to come. Jesus came that you might have life and you might have it more abundantly. Confess the greatest name on earth by stating with our mouth, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And being baptized in the water, oh, the blood of Jesus in the water, oh, baptism is a barrier. He that do this for the remission of your sins, and then you can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. If you're here this morning already a child of God, you find yourself a distance from God. You, 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 you find yourself doing things that God is not pleased with. So we serve a loving God. We serve a forgiving God. He'll take you back. Only thing you got to do is just, just repent. <laughs> just change. If you've done something to open that everybody know about, you need to confess. Let the church know I have sinned. And I'm asking the church to pray for me. And we will pray for you today. If you are here, you got a prayer need. We've got, we got different people going through sickness and death. We're going to continue to pray for Sister Scott who lost her, her grandson uh, this week. And we never know what's going to happen this week. Every week is another week. Every day is another day. Anybody can get a phone call you don't want. That's why our faith can help somebody else. Get close to God. Parents, mamas, and daddies so you can help somebody else. If you have a prayer need for yourself or anyone else, make it known right now as we together stand and sing the invitation of the song. At your door, at your door, at your door, at your door, at your door.